All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Nathaniel McDaniels, 379-022. All right, Nathaniel, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Pete Freeman and Mr. Tony Maribel will be your panel. Ask them questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Looks like we have Mr. Daryl Miles again. We'll make a brief statement. Carrie, Kelly Orens, Liam Zaya. Does that sound right? We got two attorneys. I mean, you got just some attorneys. All right. Nathaniel McDaniel, DOC number 379022. Your fifth class offender. Pro eligibility date 9, 12, 29, 2017. Good time 4 18, 2028. 20, Full term, 3-29-2029, your 15-year sentence. Simple burglary, habitual offender, and, uh, uh, conviction on unauthorized entry of a business, simple burglary, seven counts. Looks like you were revoked in 2015. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right. You want to answer Mr. Maribel's questions, please? Mr. McDaniel, how old are you, sir? I'm 47. And how long have you been in on this 15-year sentence? Um, I want to say nine years and four months. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about uh, why you're in jail. Uh, you're in jail on a couple of burglaries. I mean, you've got a pretty significant criminal history. Uh, and I think it's pretty obvious it's been because of drugs. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me about your drug use. When did you start using drugs? Um, I started using I started using crack cocaine when at the age of fifteen. Okay. And how often were you using back in two thousand? Um, basically every day. And uh, in the last. Probably uh, 30 years, 30 plus years, you've been arrested 20 times, theft, possession of cocaine, multiple burglaries, DWIs, uh, public drunkenness, all of those things. About how long uh, do you anticipate that you've been in prison your entire life? How many years? Um, I want to see maybe 32, 33 years. 32, 33 years of 47 years in prison? Yes, sir. So let's talk a little bit about, about your, your drug use. Uh, you, you, since you've been back in, you, you've taken some programs. You've taken Living in Balance, one and two, thanking for change, pre-release, anger management, uh, victim awareness. Uh, you've done some good things while you've been in prison this last time. Uh, now, see, you've got two writers, uh, one on April the 5th of 2022 and another one on April 6th of 2022. One was from contraband and the other was for intoxication. Tell me about those write-ups. Well, um, the contraband write-up is, um, I had, I was in a cell in DCI, I mean, up in Hunts, um, HRDC. And um, during this here time, um, I got caught with a knife um, that was in my cell. Um, me and my seller, hey, me and my seller was in, a, I had a cell at the time. And during that time in Hunts, um, it's either, you know, it wasn't for me just being, just having it, just to have it. It was just me honestly protecting myself because at that time in Hunts, they were just doing random things back there. And I wasn't trying to be a victim of nobody else trying to do me nothing. So in order, that's the only way I could protect myself by the way Hunts was being ran. What about the intoxication? Intoxication? Well, due to that um, intoxication, to be honest with you, I just, I was going through something at that time and, you know, um, smoking mojo was something that I I, I feel as though that, that it helped me numb whatever I was going, what I was going through. And um, I got, I, I, I just got carried away with it. And I, 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 I guess I did too much. and. Well, that's kind of it's kind of what drug addicts do. That, that's, that's what they do, and that's my concern. Uh, you know, tell me if if you were released, uh, tell me what your plan to stay sober is. You know, when you get out of prison, 
I mean, you've been in prison at, by your own calculations, 32 years of 47 year life. You've been in for the last nine years. The world has changed a whole lot. Hadn't gotten a lot better if, if it has gotten better at all. So when you get out, you're going to run into all kinds of problems. So tell me how you're going to be able to stay sober. Well, first of all, me staying sober is on, um, well, if I'm granted parole the day, I'll be going to first 72 plus and dealing with first 72 plus, they got all kinds of programs set up for you. And um, they got certain people that I can talk to when a certain time like that come up or a thought come up like that, I can go to somebody and actually talk, sit down and talk to somebody like I never did here before. So that's, um, you know, AANA, the ungone drum programs they got for me, doing whatever it is that that that'll keep me focused, whatever it is that'll keep me focused, keep me on the right path to um doing what I'm supposed to do to stay out there and stay. What have so, you learned your triggers today? What are your triggers? My triggers, my triggers is basically being around the wrong people, being around the wrong people, because that's just basically what I was doing my whole life, being around the wrong people. I joined the crowd and got lost in it. And um, I, I basically couldn't, I basically wasn't thinking for myself. I was thinking me being around these people that I can get that cool point. And that's something just, that's what I thought was, that's, that's, that's what I thought was, was it then. Tell me about the STEP program that you took at Raven. Excuse me, sir? Tell me about the AA STEP pro, 12 STEP program you took at Raven. Well, the twelve step that I, 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 um I, I come to find out that I'm, I'm 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 I have no control over my habits. Um, I'm powerless. Um, and, and and basically I can't do nothing. Now. I can't do nothing without Jesus in my life because that's tell that's, me that's the that's program. How long was the program? The program was um six weeks. Okay, so it was an education program. You broke up, Mr. Merrick. So it was an educational program. Warden, the program he's talking about, oh, uh, the AA educational the program. program, that's an educational program? No, sir. Um, the educational program, when I first got you, I did the test. Um, they put me on backlog. Well, tell me what the, the have you ever had any long term substance abuse treatment? Yes, I did. Um, um, and when I was in New Orleans, when I was out there, I, I, I went to New Orleans General um, Rehabilitation. Um, and when was that? Um, this was in the early 90s. Okay. Well, that obviously didn't work. I mean, had it since then. Long-term was, treatment since then. No, sir, I did not. You think you need that? Yes, I do. I do, too. Okay. I think that's all. Warden, what can you tell us about uh, Mr. McDaniel? You know, I've, I've known McDaniel for, for a long time at, at DCI um, and then here since he's been here. Um, you know, he and I spoke earlier in, in our little pre-parole meeting and, and, you know, as your concerns was my concerns, looking back through his, his write-ups and, and seeing the intoxications through his history of of being incarcerated. Um, I can say that since he's been here, he has not had any, which is a good thing. Um, and he, he's been in the classes, always been respectful to me. And, and um, you know, I, I guess it's going to be what he can do if, if he gets a chance to get out of here to be able to stay off and, and not fall back in that pit. Thank you, Warren. All right. Now we'll hear from Mr. Darrell Miles. Brief statement, Mr. Miles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Miles, again, first 72 plus. We have a plan set out for Mr. McDaniels that uh, he will be a, a prime candidate for. Uh, Mr. Daniels, we understand, has a long-term uh, drug addiction problem. And we have the first 72 hours of his release, he'll be... Uh, seeing counsel, the Council on Alcohol and Drug Abuse in the greater New Orleans area. Uh, from there, uh, Mr. McDaniel will be in a stringent 
drug program that we have called Nine Steps to Staying Free. In that program, he will have a house curfew of 9 p.m. unless he's working. If he's not working, he'll be in house at 9, 8, 9 p.m. He will also have a round-the-clock coach. He will be able to reach out by phone and have visits with this individual uh, weekly. And by phone, he can call that individual anytime he feels the need or he thinks that a trigger is about to take place. He will be randomly drug tested as well. And he will be in life skill training as long as he's in our program. Our program is geared toward him being there for at least six months. After that point, housing and uh, employment will definitely be a uh, uh, priority for Mr. McDaniel. So should the board release him today, this decision that you make will not be one you will regret. And All I right, think thank you. Thank you. I would, uh... As far as the attorneys, you guys would like to make a follow-up a statement after his statement. Is that good? Great. Great. Well, yeah, only one on the call. Uh, we'll hear from Mr. Uh, McDaniel. I'd like to make a brief statement, Mr. McDaniel. Um, I just want to see. Um, you know, I, 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 I first. I would like to apologize to the victims who are property owners who became victims of my actions. I apologize for my criminal past history. I would like to apologize to my family and those who that I hurt. I'm sorry. I hope I hope I can be forgiven for everything I did for the last nine years and four months. I did change my life and give myself to God, give my life to God, and my habits no longer is a part of me. Just give me a chance now. All right, thank you. Now we're here from uh, the wrap up of uh, the lawyer. I guess that's a student lawyer, Mr. Liam Zaya. Is that who we're here from? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning, Good morning uh, members of the Committee on Parole. My name is Liam Zaya, and I'm a third year law student at the University of Virginia School of Law, I'm here to offer a brief statement on behalf of Mr. McDaniel. Uh, I begin today by respectfully requesting that you grant Mr. McDaniel's request for parole. Uh, there are two key themes in our eyes that emerge that make his case exceptional. Uh, first, as uh, we've discussed already, Mr. M Mr. McDaniel has a robust reentry plan in place, developed in detail with the first 72 plus. The plan is focused on helping him sustain his sobriety through group support meetings and also intensive outpatient treatment. But it'll also support him in other ways, including by allowing Mr. McDaniel to join a church community, one of his top priorities for his life after prison, and he'll also be connected to counseling and healthcare. Uh, from the very first day and indeed the first hours he's released, Mr. McDaniel will access all of this through the vehicle of First 72 Plus transitional housing, placing him in a new supportive environment of accountability while he'll be set up to succeed. Uh, briefly, second, and in light of this de -entry, de detailed reentry plan, it's important to recognize the self-directed nature of Mr. McDaniel's transformation for the last 15 months. His decision in recent years to get sober and successfully complete programming on a whole host of subjects has been entirely his own. Indeed, he is carrying himself. The sustained progress that has come from all of this hard work shows how serious Mr. McDaniel is about driving his own transformation and indicates that he knows and realizes that ultimately success is up to him. Uh, to conclude here, we believe that granting Mr. McDaniel parole today with his reentry plan already in place will allow him to continue the momentum he's already built up and provide him with an opportunity to rebuild his life. Once again, we respectfully request that you give consideration to the compelling circumstances surrounding his case and grant him the chance to prove himself as a rehabilitated individual. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, panel, fair to vote. Mr. Marabella? Yes. Uh, Mr. McDaniel, in looking at, uh, at your record, uh, the clear problems that you've had uh, are all drug-related. Uh, by your own admission, you've been in prison uh, 32 of 47 years of your life. Uh, you're a moderate risk. You have serious uh, substance abuse issues. You've had some disciplinary issues recently, uh, one directly related to substance abuse. Uh, but since then, you've taken some programs. Uh, you've taken uh, some good programs and, and you've done well. So it looks like you may finally have, have gotten the light 
Uh, and that's what it's going to take. I mean, a drug addict is a drug addict forever until they realize they need help and want to do something about it. Uh, I just don't think you're quite there yet. Uh, I think you need a little more. I think you agreed that you needed uh, some more treatment, some inpatient treatment. So my vote today would be to grant your parole conditionally upon your completing a long-term substance abuse program in the Department of Corrections, primarily Stephen Hoyle, uh, and then upon your end that you get no more disciplinary write-ups. And if you complete that program successfully and you were released, the conditions would be to follow all of the recommendations of Steve Hoyle, uh, to attend at least three AA meetings per week, to have random drug samples for the entire time of your parole, and to be on a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's one vote. That's my vote. And uh, that, Mr. Chairman, that's my vote. All right, Mr. Freeman. Uh, due to your disciplinary history, my vote is to deny. All right, you have one vote to deny and one vote to grant. Uh, again, I am concerned about your uh, your disciplinary history, but you know, with the uh, comments from the warden, the, the, the time you spent, I, I'm going to vote to grant your parole to the Steve Hall Intensive Substance Abuse Program. Uh, you'll have, after you successfully complete that, it'll be three three times a week in AAA, curfew 9P to 6A, and you'll have random drug screen. You understand? So two votes to grant, one to deny, you grant to the Steve Hall Intensive Substance Abuse Program. You understand stipulations? You understand where you're going? Yes, so. All right. That's two good. votes to grant, one to deny. Your parole's been granted. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.